good, good evening or good afternoon, I guess. It's kind of either or. It's 3.47, so I'm a, I'm a little late. <laughs> I liked all the comments. I'll have to read through them here in a second. That's funny. Bring Santa, bring Tanya a new mic. I actually just got this one, and it's funny. It, like, I think it's the actual, um, like, port that I, like, plug them into. They, we just bought it, but I think it might be, like, a little off. So the cord, I think, has to be in there a certain way. So that's kind of um, crappy. I was wondering what that was. But, oh, and then I tried to light a candle earlier, and I didn't have a long enough lighter. So I thought, oh, I'll just, like, burn a piece of paper to do it. That didn't work out very well either. So, but anyways... I'll wait for some people to kind of come on. Football is still on. Um, it's not looking good out there. So um, my boyfriend kicked me out of the bed or out of the living room. So I'm over in the studio now. He, um, <laughs> yeah, he was like, "You're by luck," because I went out. I went to get food, and when I came back, they were like doing good. They were doing really well, and then um, I don't know. I got home, and he said I was I was bad luck. So. That now I'm just like, I'll just go get on my life then, guys. That's why I was like, I'll just go live then. That's fine. My little house is lit up, but you can't really tell from there. Well, you can see it a little bit. It has a little candle in it. it like, I should have got a fake candle, but I didn't. And so it's like a real candle. I don't know where I could put my drink, so it's kind of like not in the way of all my cute decorations. And my tree over here, I got this lovely tree, if you guys didn't see this yet. It looks pretty dark over there. Maybe I can... It's late. I don't know. I got a little bit or something. Who knows? Anyways, welcome to my channel where we talk all things, you know, true crime. If you are new to my channel, I hope you appreciate today's live and consider subscribing. You know, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell, that bell icon too while you're at it to be notified of all notifications. I do go live pretty often. Open minds. Oh, I didn't see your comment. Is football stolen? My husband actually went outside. It must be a break or something. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he needed a breather. It's not, they're not doing very well, I don't think, right now. I <laughs> I know. I have to. I, I usually use... Um, like one of the long lighters, like the grill lighters or whatever, but I, don't, I didn't have one. And so I was like, I'll just use this. And it's just where like, you know, it was getting so far in the candle. I couldn't reach my hand with the lighter. So instead of asking for help, I was just like, I'll just burn the place down. Oh, hi from Norway. Nice. Is it Lee's? Oh, Norway. I wonder what time it is in Norway. Well, welcome. Cause you are new to the channel. We have a lot of good people in here today. I did want to show you this cute little thing that I just got in at my boutique. Um, I got these in actually last Christmas, and then I ordered them again this Christmas because they were just really, really cute. So I was like, I got to show them to the ladies and the gentlemen on my channel because it works for both men and both women because it's a bath care product. So it's um, it's so it, what it is is it says on the box, lump of coal soap from Santa Claus. Because everyone is a little naughty sometimes. And like, this is the box that it comes in. And I believe they were $15 on my site. Um, it's a four ounce um, cedar wood like soap. And um, it's just like, a, it looks like a clump of coal. Cause it's like a dark, like they, um, whoever it's handmade. So the people that made it, they like probably dipped it in some sort of dye to make it look like black or something like a charcoal. But it, yeah, oh yeah, it is 15. I have the price tag on my, I forgot to put them on the back of there. Wow. But yeah, um, so I really like this soap. I used to use it a lot, but I haven't used it um, since last year. But it is um, organic coconut oil, organic shea butter, organic sustained palm oil, olive oil, organic coconut butter, um, a propriety of blend of sandalwood, cedar wood, essential oil, activated charcoal, dead sea salt, a plethora of love. <laughs> Hefty scoop of humor and a pinch of mischief and cra uh, Christmas magic. Yeah, so I thought it was just real cute. And you get it, it comes in like a um, a like velvet bag, or not a velvet, it's like a silk bag, like a black silk bag, like a pouch. And then it has a certificate of authenticity from Santa. 
just stating that you were on the naughty list. And it's really cute. It like has like, this whole little saying on it and it um, has a wax seal. So it's like stamped with a wax seal and it's really cute. So if you guys are thinking of any or need any stocking stuffers, that's, I figured I'd let you guys know I have those. And I always let you guys know, and I haven't let you know in a while, but you do get 20% off on my website. It is Poppy and Ari, P-O-P-P-I. It's at the end of the, it's at the bottom of the screen right now. Um, you, if you use the code YouTube, all capitalized 20, you can get 20% off anything in the store. And I have, I'm not running that sale anywhere else because I forgot. Ain't gonna lie. Um, I, I, I've been doing so much YouTube that I kind of like been, you know, not doing as much with my boutique that I need to. I mean, I've been ordering clothes and things like that, that I haven't been going live. I used to go live every Thursday and, um, I don't know. I just, I need to get back into it. <laughs> so yeah, if you want any of those, just let me know. You can um, order them at, on my website up below. And yeah, so when you go to checkout, just put in all capitalized YouTube 20 and then it'll get you what you need. And if you decide you want any clothing off of my site, and if you need any help with sizing, just let your girl know. I'm really good at um, any size. I'm really good at like being able to judge pretty basically. I can base it mostly off of a picture or a few pictures. Um, you know, on your round, uh, like if you tell me what your roundabout size is, I can usually pin it down for you. Because some of this, you know, some boutique clothing, they run different sizing. I do try to run... I've been running zero to 26 in sizing, but some of my stuff is just like zero to like 10, 12 right now, because that's like what has been more popular. But I want to try to get in a little bit more curvier items because I just think they're so darn cute. I used to work at a curvier boutique. So I swear I can like dress anybody from here to like wherever. But yeah, so I got to just let you guys know about that. Have you had a good Saturday? Has anybody watched the game? It was it was going well. I don't know um, how well it's going now. Because hmm. I, haven't, I haven't heard him yell, though, in a couple minutes. He never yells, so it's so funny to me. I was in the bathroom, and I was, like, putting some makeup on, and he's out there, and he's going, oh, fudge, because he doesn't, like, cuss, really. I do, but he doesn't. And I'm in here and I'm like, I was giggling. I was laughing so hard. I was like, oh my gosh, I should have videotaped him. Let's see what the score is. Oh, it's 45 to 23 in Michigan. Oh, that's the final score. That's, oh, it's over. So maybe that's why I haven't heard him in a while. He might be crying. And I don't know um, if Open Minds is still on here, but your husband, he might be he might be going to the bar. He might have left, girl. He might be going to the bar. But yeah, I used this soap before anyway, so I and I love it. I think it's really good. It's a cute little like gift to give, like a gag gift. Um, and I have some really other like some other cute things on there. I've got like the, um, what was I gonna say, like bath bombs and things like that. My boyfriend just loves those. He's to he's probably bought the most of them out of anybody. <laughs> It's been so, so funny. Let me see here. So, yeah, I was going to go over um, the Idaho court case today because I have, like, so many questions, I feel like, still. And I figured we could all sleuth it out together. Um, I'm going to put the – sorry, my earring was bothering me. I'm going to put the um, code in there. I'm going to copy the, the panel. If you guys want to come up with panel or whatever, you guys can come up. We can discuss the case too as well. Um, but I wanted to tell you guys also before we get started, if you are new, um, yeah, drop your name, drop your location. Um, if you haven't joined our membership yet, you can um, join by clicking the join um, now button. I think it's below or on my main page. And um, you can just hit the join now button. It's right on the main page over there. And it's going to be a really good time. I've been posting a lot more for my members only. like, And I want to do more lives for members only and things like that as well. I think I might do maybe Sunday mornings or pick like a day of the week and do it. Just, um, you know, that way it's consistent. And you guys will always be um, able to expect that. So, And then also, you know, like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. So... We will go ahead and get started. If you guys need the link, I'll show you. I'll try to show you that soap again, like throughout the video. Um, and if you guys need the link, I'll put it back up here. Also. And 
I have, I printed out like, uh, I typed up some notes and stuff. That way we could go over like the facts of the case that we know of like, you know what I mean? Like factual, factual things of this case. In, and I'm talking about the Idaho four, of course. Um, the Idaho four uh, massacre of the four um, students from the University of Idaho that were um, stabbed in their sleep on November 13th. So that's the story that we are talking about today. And I just kept it. I just kept it for one story. Um, but if we do get off topic and we go to an, like another um, story, don't get us in the comments with anything. I know I've noticed that on other channels if they go off topic, people will like crucify them or something. I don't know. I don't get it. I do want to check just one thing really quick and just make sure. Yep, my audio is good. We are good. Okay. Because sometimes it's just it's been really weird lately. But I've heard that from a lot of people that use that use StreamYard that they've been having trouble just even doing their lives. So um, I guess I'm fortunate that I've been able to come on and do my lives. Okay. So let's see the uh, facts of the case we're going to go over. I didn't know that was your name, Teddy. <laughs> I like that you put your whole name in your middle initial. And like, it was like, like it was like an AA thing, like AA meeting. And I'm an alcoholic. My name is Willie. <laughs> I like that name. You go by William, Willie, Will, all of the above. Some people go like, um, you know, their name will be like my uncle, like his name was Richard. And my dad used to call him like Dickie all the time or Dick <laughs> all the time. Cause some, and some men, that's what they go after. And I'm like, oh, that's what they go as. I'm like, that doesn't even make sense. Or like, you know, if your name is William, they'll go by Will or something along those lines. I don't have any shorter version for my name, unfortunately. I guess if it was Titanium Bill, it would, my shorter version would be Tanya. Okie dokie. So I don't have that many. We don't have that many facts of this case. Um, we just have a whole lot of speculation. So I'm going to go over what I kind of know. And if I forget anything, that's what you guys are going to help me figure out. And if I say anything incorrectly, let me know that too. And we can, um, I'll put like a star beside it and then we'll go through them. Cause I wanted to go through some like videos and see what they had on the website for the, um, Mos or the, um, the Idaho, this was it Moscow. Yeah. Um, website that they have. Hold on a second. I guess kind of noisy. I meant to grab a different one. If that bothers you, let me know. I hate like noise in the background when I'm like whenever I'm watching the live. So I try not to have too much background noise. Um, the victims, though, they are Kaylee, Maddie, Ethan, and Zaina. Um, all of them went to the University of Idaho. There hasn't been a murder in that town since 2015. So that's, they're, you know, they're not very prepared. Oh, also, I wanted to check this person out. I just remember something. So, um, Kaylee had a golden doodle and its name, his name was Murphy. Maddie had a boyfriend named Jake. Zayna and Ethan were dating and he was visiting for the night. Um, five roommates lived in the six bedroom, three or uh, six bedroom, three bathroom house. And it was a three story house. Um, and it was an off, uh, off campus apartment, I guess you would say. Um, Ethan and Zayna went to a fraternity party on November the 12th or the 13th. And Kylie, um, or I'm sorry, Kaylee and Maddie went to the corner bar and then went to the grub, uh, food truck to grab some food. And they were there for about 10 minutes waiting on their food to be made. And they were seen, you know, we were we all seen the footage of the Twitch footage. And we saw that um, they were just kind of hanging around. And I kind of want to watch that again, too, because I still feel like there's some things that need to be seen on there because I've heard some rumors about um, some things and I, just, I don't know. I feel like we need to watch it again, maybe. Um, let me see what else. <laughs> Dick Bond. We, I'll, I'll make sure that I call you that. I'll remember. Um, that's what he's going by. Hi, Doreen. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to the chat. We are going over, um, if you guys are new or anybody came in since I started talking, we've just gone over the facts of the um, Idaho 4 massacre that happened on November 13th. And we just started, so. We just got started. So uh, let's see. Sorry. Um, Maddie and Kaylee received um, a 
drive, I drive home from a private driver. And that's my first question for you guys. So like a private driver, what, what is that? Does anyone know what a private driver is? Um, do you guys have that where you're from? I don't, we don't have that here. We have Lyft, Uber, and a taxi. And I know of gypsy tax, gypsy cabs, but I mean, I don't, I don't think they're here, but I don't know what that is. That is the problem that they um, Oh yes, uh huh. I my boyfriend's talking about the game, um, Michigan Ohio State game being the biggest game of the year, and I'm like, oh no, you don't. I said that's reserved for the Cowboys Eagles. <laughs> yeah, and that's that is the problem. We don't have any new facts, and that's why I feel like we're getting like misconstrued with like all the speculation. I feel like my brain has like so much in it that it's just like it's. Where I, I can't like get like a person in my like you know in my head of who I think it could be because there's just so many different things going through. Right? Thing is like my watch is going off fast. I don't know why. It's probably sales, you know, because it's that time of the year, so sales are coming through. Um, so, private driver. Does anybody know what what a private driver is? I'm gonna look that up. What? So let's see, I'll share it with you. Okay, so it says, what well, says a personal? What's in the sick private? No. Well, that's not gonna work. Would it be? No, I don't think that's, but it says this one, I mean, a personal driver operates a vehicle to transport passengers to a variety of locations. In this role, an individual might work for a transportation company or as the private driver for one individual. Other titles for this job include chauffeur or private driver. Do you think the private driver could be like, okay, so you ever been in like an Uber or a Lyft and um, you just meet like a really cool driver? And they offer, like, I've had drivers offer, um, I used to work, it was a 10 minute walk. So like a two minute drive and it would cost me like eight or $9 or something. And every once in a while, like, I wouldn't want to walk over. So I would take a Lyft or Uber or whatever. And they would always offer like a lot of the time, like, Hey, if I'm not busy with somebody, um, here's my number, even like, here's my cell phone number, just, or here's my business card. Give me a call and I'll can pick you up like off the books. If you just want to give me some money for it, like, you know, throw me some money. Could that have been the case maybe like, and they had a friend that they like kind of knew, but he worked for like maybe Lyft or an Uber or a driving service, but he was doing it off the books. So they couldn't say he was really working for that company. So I was, I too was wondering what they meant by the, they took a private ride home. Yeah. And then Teddy said in the nineties, don't hitchhike with strangers in the 2000s. We said, don't meet up with people from the internet. Now in the 2020s, we get into cars with strangers from the internet, Uber, yeah. And even before, like, they told you to do this, like, I always made sure to ask them my name and always check the license plate. I always, I'm always one of those people. And I just couldn't believe, like, how many people really just jump in the car because I guess you really don't know. Like, if they pull up like that, like, with such confidence, you don't think about it, you just get in. Hi, Paul. Welcome to the chat. So maybe it was, like, I don't know. I want to know what this personal driver is. I'm going to put that. I know that it's not listed anywhere, but I'm just going to put like a little star beside it. So I think that way I'll, I can keep going down the list of the facts. Um, so yeah, so that would be, that was, okay. So they were on their way home and that said, oh, oh, hi, that's a dumb blonde. Oh, yep. I'm on. Make sure that bell icon is alerted so you get all the notifications. <laughs> If someone could go into a house and kill four people without supposedly waking up the other two people in the house, they've done this before. Yeah, it's just, this is, it's, this is weird. Okay, so let me see how many more facts I have. I don't have that many more. I'm going to go through them really quick because I have like a, a theory, a little theory. And then we'll try to like dig and look at some stuff. Um, so then the neighbor security camera got the girls coming home 
at 1.56 a.m. that night. And we know that um, Ethan and Zaina made it home about 1.45. The morning of November 13th, one of the roommates on the first floor called a friend to come over, and they found one of the roommates on the second floor and couldn't wake them up. That's where the unconscious person came in. I still don't understand that either, but maybe when we get more detail into that, we'll understand it. Like maybe if they were covered up or something along those lines, it's where you couldn't, you could still see a lot. I don't know. Or maybe they couldn't get a light to turn on when they walked into the room. Maybe the lamp got like damaged in the altercation. So they just, and they were covered up. I don't, I don't know. That's just still really gets me feeling weird, you know? And it could be someone in the group that they knew. Of course. I think that it is somebody that they know a, a little bit at least. Um, right before noon, one of the roommates called the police and said that they wouldn't wake up, that their roommate wouldn't wake up and they, um, thought they were passed out. When the officers got there, that's when they found all four victims. They were brutally stabbed to death. The two surviving roommates didn't hear or see anything, but they were both gone and out of town until around 1 a.m. on the 13th. Um, the autopsy showed that they were all stabbed with a large knife, no forced entry, the crime scene was extremely bloody because we could tell by the outside of the um, house. Remember the dripping, the blood um, down the cinder blocks. Um, a Mormon conspiracy, and I'm serious, just like the Lori Vallow case. You never know. It's not like downtown. Okay, I think it's more of a, I think it is more of like a downtownish area. Um, I'm trying to think of what it would be like. It's just like if you were like living in a, uni you know, like, okay, larger universities, they have like a town, they're like a town inside of a town or something. You know what I mean? So they're not usually hugely like big and populated, but they have a lot of students, faculty, things like that, that live in that general area, usually of the university, or they live in like, you know, on university grounds and like a dorm. These girls, they stayed in off campus housing, but it was on fraternity row. So or one of a sort of fraternity row. It was like right there along all of the main attractions. So they were only, I believe, like five or six minutes from that local bar. Um, so that's not very far, I don't think. It's a student town, Isabel said. We all know the students can be get a little bit rowdy from time to time. They seriously don't expect us to believe there's no cameras nearby. Exactly. Yeah. I think, so I'm going to tell you what I think here in a second too, because I was thinking about it the other day. Um, there are signs of essay. Evidence showed that Kylie called her ex, Jack um, Decor, at no or November 13th, um, who goes to Idaho University as well. First call was at 226, and then six more calls over 26 minutes until 252. And Maddie called three times at 244. Last call was at 252. And they believe it was a target attack. So. What did Tony say? Taxi driver. Idaho house was near a drug distribution point. That's where people go to get drugs in the news story released today. Oh, really? If you know which one, let me know. Like which, um, like which news release and I'll put it up. I guess I can take this off there. I think you're right, Teddy. It's got me someone there to post that. Okay. So, um, let me see. Where's my thing? This thing's always like breaking on me. So I'm thinking like, I'm thinking they were calling Jack either because she wanted to talk to him. Like, you, I don't know, because she had been drinking or something. Maybe she wanted him to come over or, and she was drink Like she was doing it like one after the, the other, because I, I can get like that. I used to be like that whenever I would drink. Like if I wanted to talk to somebody and they weren't answering, I would like call them be like, Oh, I was home again. Like, I, I mean, when I was like in my twenties, you know, or your teens, late teens, early twenties, like, I don't know. I could see you doing that. And I could see you telling my friend to call him too and be like, you call him. Like if I have my best friend with me, you call him, you try him. But, um, you may be that, or she was in distress, but I don't know why she wouldn't call 911, but I know that he goes, I said that he went to the same university. So maybe she thought he's always maybe been there and always maybe like, helped her in the past and she just knew to call him maybe that's the number she knew maybe he was in her speed dial i don't i don't know 
It appears both Zana's parents have Department of Corrections records. Really? I knew that. I heard her. Someone said something about that. I thought the other day in the chat, like they were like, "Did Zana's mom go to jail over the weekend?" And we were all like, "What? Really?" Yeah, the fact that the survivors were calling Jack is weird. What if they're trying to make sure it was safe? I mean, who was Jack? It'd be sus. No, so um, Jack, the girls called him, and it was um, Maddie's, or it was Kaylee's ex-boyfriend, I believe. They started calling at 226, um, and then they called, and they had a dog together, so it was Kaylee, um, and then Maddie had the boyfriend, Jake. There's too many. There's Jake and Jack, so it's kind of hard to like remember their names. So sorry, um, but no, they called him like a few. They called him like six different times, and I think she, Maddie, called him three times. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. I've been on like the one in. Um, I've been on like the Department of Corrections for. Um, you can't think of where I used to live in Chillicothe. I don't know why I got on it though. I need to see if there's someone was in there or something, but I can't remember why I did that. Okay, we're gonna go to that after this because I was gonna tell you um, what I thought. Okay, so what if? Okay, so this is my like my one of my theories, and I swear I should get like a like a whiteboard back here and we should just write on it, like that because it's so much easier when I have like like I can visually see stuff. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a visual person. But what if, um, what if it was somebody that lived close to them, like a neighbor, like a, okay. So let's just say it was a neighbor. Um, he would have access to watching them, stalking them, looking at their every move really pretty much through those big windows. Um, he would have access to all of that. He wouldn't look out of the, out of place because he lives there. I mean, what if this person and he what if he got the access code and he could have even got the access code by simply what if um it was a summer night and the girls and the guys or whatever whoever's partying over at the house because it's it's it was a big house it would, it would have been the place to go you know they have all that balcony space what if you know him and like this said person and maybe he had a girlfriend and they were walking home one night and they lived close enough that they like hollered over like or they just happen to pass them and they're like, hey, you want to come to our party? And they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to go to our house first and grab like beer or drinks or blah, blah, blah. We'll meet you over there. And they're like, oh, the passcode's one, two, three, four. Yeah, just come on in when you get there. And they maybe with because he that guy was with a female, whoever approached these people, you know, maybe gave him the code. This is me speculating, full speculation. But maybe like what if that, I mean, and that's how he got the code. And he just kind of like stashed that in his little head for a while. What if it is somebody that looks close? And he he would know if there's cameras around. He would know which buildings have cameras, which buildings don't have cameras, which who's in which bedroom. Because I mean, obviously that when that place is lit up, there's those windows are big and there's a lot of them. So I don't know. That's what I was kind of thinking. And what if this person? didn't just have this knife like handy. What if he collected knives? Like what if he was just a collector of knives and he had all these knives? Like he had, and he had this specific one and he knew that that one would get the job done. So that's the one he grabbed. Cause I know a lot of people that collect knives. Nothing wrong with collecting knives. But could he, glad it was clear that he thought that. <clears throat> yeah, see he was like, um, yeah, I really thought it was him too. I really did. Because I that that video looks bad, but yeah, they said that they talked to him and that they're, he's not a person that, like has interest right now. I believe something like that. It's I think it's privately owned, but it's managed by like a company or something like that. I think a company manages it. Let me see. I don't hear that. Um, oh, and then um, I was going to play this in a minute. 
I didn't think that there, the eyes says Idaho murders, uh, Moscow police find no evidence links between like the other killings, which I didn't think that those were all connected. The ones in Oregon, um, I think, I believe and some stuff like that. I, I didn't think that that was related in any way. But they did pay for their food. See, that's what I don't get. Like, I don't get that. I, that big guy, I don't, that big guy, the big guy is creeping me out more than the little guy now. After he came out and talked. And said that he looked at the girls and they were both drunk and he said, ew. Like, if you had, I don't know if you have watched my previous lives, but in my previous lives, I thought that the big guy walked over to the hoodie guy because he saw the hoodie guy looked like he was with Ky or Kaylee and Manny, and I thought he was going to try to piggyback off of that guy and try to go home with all of them because he saw one guy and two drunk girls. Two drunk girls, one guy. And you know how college guys can be. So he went, and that's why I th thought he approached that guy and started talking to him because he even said, dude, the girls are leaving when they started to leave. Like, I don't know about the big guy. The big guy has a daughter. See, I don't know. Maybe he just wanted to, maybe he said, ew, to make it, make himself look better. But it didn't make him look, it didn't make him look good by saying that. It just didn't give him a good look, you know, because you can clearly tell that they're not both intoxicated like that. Kaylee is, Maddie isn't. It doesn't seem like she's as drunk, but she orders food. And I'm pretty sure she pays for it because I thought I least saw her give her the money. And that's what I'm going to check that out. I'm going to check out that picture. Um, let me see. I'm trying to switch things. I don't know if it'll show it all though. Oops, go back. Looks like right here, I mean, she has like her purse in her hand right there, her wallet. Um, I was gonna see if there we go. Or that's her phone or her wallet. I can't, I don't know. Oh, it's not, no volume. It looks like she has one of those wallets that fold up into her phone. Like, you know, the folding ones? Because it looked like she folded it. And look, she's paying for it right now. She's putting her number in, her code in. Or something. I'm just going to let it play through. She's paying with it right now with her phone. Did you see that? Right here. Y'all see that? I don't know um, who said she didn't pay. Cassie. Yeah, no, she paid. She paid with her, she paid with her phone. I think that she was having problems with like putting her info in or something because you can see the machine like lighting up and then she puts her phone. You can see it right here. She's sitting her phone on it right now. I'm going to go back just a little bit because that's what I think she is doing because she's definitely doing something. She's not just putting her info in to get her food or anything like that. They're not taking her last name, you know what I mean, in a computer like that. See, she's paying with her phone. She just swiped her phone. So, because like a lot of people are, um, a lot of people are giving these girls like bad rap, like bad names. They're like saying, I've heard someone even insinuate that they have like an OnlyFans page. 
like no wear, no butt. I mean, there was nothing that sh showed that these rules did anything wrong that evening <clears throat> whatsoever. And even if they did, even if they were right there, right there stealing all the food in that truck and taking off with the truck itself with the people in it or whatever, do you know what I mean? They don't, they never deserve to be like hurt like that. And they didn't like, I don't know. Now their name's just being like in like running the mud. I feel like, like, so I'm just gonna, I don't know. Yeah, she, yeah, she, and I, I remember him saying that. That's why I was like, it would rub me the wrong way that article did, like with him, the way he was like, ew, I said, ew, gross, those girls are, ew. Like, Kaylee, yeah, she, she was tipsy, she was drunk, she's feeling it. She reminds me, she reminded me of my friend Jillian. The blonde hair, the, the big jacket, like, she was so small and she always wore, like, I don't know. She just, she just reminds me of her and I love Jillian, but she was kind of oblivious when it came to things around her when she was intoxicated. She just was. But she had good friends that were a little bit better at being, you know, aware, aware of their surroundings a little more. Do you get what I'm saying? Like me and like things like that. I don't know. I was a little bit older. Maybe that's why. But so we always kept her safe. And that's what it looks like in this video. I The first time I even watched this video, the way she says that she wants, um, I can't even say it, Corona, whatever it's called, that she orders. She couldn't even hardly say it. I couldn't even hardly say it. I'm thinking maybe it was something that, you know, maybe Kaylee liked, and she was ordering for the both of them to eat it. But I don't know. Exactly, Isabel, yeah. It's a bit extreme, yeah. But maybe if it wasn't, it wasn't a student. I don't think it was a student. Like, I just, oh, I don't think, I don't think it well really was a student, per se. If it was a neighbor... I'm thinking it's like a guy that just lives over there. Like maybe not a student, but maybe around the same age, like maybe a little bit older, like 26, 27 ish. I don't know. Yeah. The dog survived. Oh, the surviving the dog. Yeah. I recognize this. this like that. I Murphy. I don't wish he could. And then a lot of people say, well, why didn't the dog bark and wake them up and all this. And like, I'd say Murphy's a golden doodle, guys. They're not normally very vocal dogs. Like, they're very good dogs. They use those in, um, like, training and, like, for four paws and rescues like that for kids and adults that are disabled. And they need animals to be able to do the smartest shit. Like, call 911 when someone's having a seizure. Like, they use those kind of dogs for that kind of stuff. So, I just don't see... Murphy going out there and going rrr, rrr, and like barking and growling and making a noise. But if he did, maybe that's what got the girls awake. Maybe that woke them up or kept them up. Oh, hello, Gregory. Oh, yeah, you're late. You're not too late. <laughs> oh, sorry. And also, I'm blonde. I just saw it. Yeah, the dog. Yeah, the dog's good. Um, the dog is with her ex boyfriend. Get the dog to point them out in the lineup. I wish. I wish that like animals could help in those things, like those instances. Did anybody else have, did you guys all like see the rest of the game? Um I had I had to come in here because I was I got thrown out of the living room <laughs> because um yeah, I wasn't the Ohio State Michigan games today. So if you guys didn't know, that's where I, I am not. I it's over now though. Legs are getting a little cold. Yes, I want I that hoodie guy. He does. I don't know. He does still get me. But when we did watch the video, he does go the opposite way of the girls. He goes. They go to the left, and he goes to the right. And we noticed that in the first time, like when we watched it and everything. But I was like, well, maybe the girls went this way. But I guess that a lot of people saw them go and get into the private car right then. So. Um, Unless he came over later on, I don't think that he followed him from, I mean, unless he followed him, he could have followed him from there, but I don't, he didn't go home with him from there. It's got to be extremely personal. And I just want to know who has the most like wounds. That's usually the person. And I've been saying this since forever. Like, you know, it's usually the person that's 
the target. I personally think that it's one of the girls upstairs and on the third floor. I hate to say that. I really do. But that's my, that's my personal opinion. Um, I just don't know what the reasoning would be other than some drained person would want it to, you know, wanted one of them. But then they, but then there's no essay. But I think probably after all of that, they probably couldn't even do anything anyway. All like, you know, like your adrenaline's going, you done killed four people or three people at that point, let's say. You never know. I don't know. Yeah, I heard about that too. That was like a while ago. Um, like what, 80s, 70s, 80s or something? It seemed like it, maybe early 90s. I don't know. I saw that, I think today, that there was like two um, Moscow, like there was two unsolved murders. But I just think that this is somebody that's younger. I don't know. I think this is somebody in their like mid, mid late 20s. Like mid, I don't know. I, but I, I don't know. I mean, that's just my opinion. Because I just feel like to take on that many people, you have to be physically, pretty physically fit. Like that's, I mean, I don't know how many times they were all each individually, you know, harmed, but there was one fatal wound to the chest, they said, and then multiple others. And then they said that Zaina had the, um, her dad was saying that she had defensive wounds. So the only way I'm thinking that happened, maybe I'm thinking that happened is he, the killer came in, got Ethan first, woke her up and it gave her enough time to react to the situation at hand. And then that's where the defensive wounds went, came in. 1969, 19, 1979. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to put the pictures look older. See, I think something in the during the day, I think they all went to a football game, but I can't find where I saw that. Did anybody else hear that? That they were like, they all went to a football game earlier that day? Oh, yeah, Gregory, you're right. That could have been it too, yeah. The act itself of, you know, murdering somebody could have been what was fine with them. I just, oh my God, how twisted does your head have to be? But yeah, she definitely paid. I don't know if everybody's still in here, but we got there. We looked at it. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, I wanted to get on the, um, let's go for see if they have anything. I thought they had something on here, but. Let's see what they have on there now. Have you guys seen this website? The Moscow Police Department put this out um, and we went over it the other night and they're putting all of their um, updates and stuff on this case right on the city of Idaho's like website which I think is pretty nice because the fact that we have so many questions and we are a society now with the internet and we have web sleuths and our brains just, you know, go into overdrive when there's cases like this, that if all the facts are in one centralized location, then it's nice, you know, to be able just to see what, you know, you can find all the facts kind of right there. So, but I haven't been on this. Um, in the last few days. I haven't been on this actually since we all got on it together. So we'll see if there's anything new. Um, I thought I, oh, I did. Okay. And then there's just like the tip line and then, you know, um, so detectives are looking to develop context for the events of people involved in the four murders at um, 1122 King Road in Moscow, Idaho. Anyone observed Notable behavior has video surveillance or can provide relevant information about these murders. There was somebody in here um, one day and they were in the U they were from the UK and they said that some people in the UK will actually put security cameras like out their window if they don't have like a ring doorbell or something. So maybe, just maybe, 
somebody will have something like that to where, you know, it'll come out. Homicide investigation update. When was this David? On the 23rd? Oh, we watched that. That was the press conference that we watched. And this just gives you a summary. Let me see if there was... Okay, I think this was, um, does anybody have any questions over this? I can go through them. More than one killer, it, there could be. Most likely somebody from, um, Meriden Mall said, most likely someone on campus was offended by one of the girls and called in a friend from out of the area to make the wrong right. That could be it too. I could see like, or he just gets mad, like the person, whoever it is, they're just mad because um maybe they they um got turned down and tracy lynn said maybe the killer broke into um r-a-p-e one of the victims and they resisted so he became angry and st sort of stabbing and heard a sound like someone was awake so then he tried to proceed to kill everyone else yeah in those like maps i showed the other day they're just i don't know man about where like the placement of the the numbers are or the letters for the people like corresponds to where the people are i just feel in my head that is where they were found because why would they put two people in a bed and then the other two victims not in a bed and those windows are right there and that screen door sliding door is right there i don't i just don't know i might have to show that again if you guys haven't seen the live um still doesn't explain why they leave two people alive a killer wouldn't possible Possibly leave witnesses unless they were one of them. Yeah. I just think that the two people, I think that where they were located in the house, they just got really lucky. I think that they are, I think instead of being in the bedroom, maybe like right here when you walk in that first door with the keypad, there's like one that goes like around the corner and it's down there a little bit. I think that one might set down lower or something to where they just did it here. I just don't know how you don't hear something. I just don't, I don't know. Uh, he may have not known there was a first floor, but that's what I said too. He more likely broke in through the sliding glass door. That's what I think. I Until I saw the chairs and I'm still thinking that he came in through the sliding door, but I just don't know because those chairs were laying flat, like to block the door but it was after the crime scene tape was there. So I'm just not sure, but he could have came in, even if he came in the front door, say, um, if he came in the front door, the stairs are right there to the left. He could have just went straight up those stairs, not realizing that downstairs, there is that those two extra bedrooms. He could have thought that was just a wide open like basement or something along those lines where it was like a large living room. You know, and it may be a laundry room. He probably didn't even make you realize. So that's what I'm thinking. That's the only reason why I'm thinking maybe two of them, you know, survive. Let's see what else they have on here. Um, we already know the public is in danger because, you know, who is not to believe involved? Let's look at this, actually. Okay, so we're going to, I was going to, re let's read through this, maybe it'll help us, maybe have a better understanding. Currently, no suspects are in custody and no weapon has been located. Um, on the night of the residence, or in, on the night of the incident, officers located, that should be on the day. But, okay, located a dog at the residence. The dog was unharmed, turned over to animal services, and then later released to a responsible party. Local businesses were contacted to determine if a fixed blade knife had been recently purchased, which I don't think he recently purchased that. And if he did purchase it, he probably purchased it online. And I'm thinking that he might be like a collector of knives. I don't know. That's just, and I don't, and I'm not saying like a collector, like, cause he's going to use them on a bunch of people. I just think maybe he just had a bunch of knives, like a collect, people collect knives. Um, detectives seized the contents of three dumpsters on King Road to locate possible evidence. Government Bra or Governor Brad Little directed 
up to one million in state emergency funds for the ongoing investigation. So um, they've tested 113 pieces of physical evidence. Oh, I'm sorry, it was collected and taken to the ISP crime lab. That's a lot of pieces of physical evidence, I would say. That's probably like carpet, blood splatter, all that. You know what I mean? Um, approximately 4,000 4, crime scene photographs taken. You think that's a lot for a crime scene of that big, of that magnitude? 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 I don't know. I'm going to read some more of your comments. Sorry. <laughs> um, the two down below heard nothing, so they witnessed nothing. Yeah. Therefore, not a threat. Yeah, exactly. They're not if they weren't a threat. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna look. Um, I was gonna look that one up through the bar department of um, Idaho Corrections, because someone was saying that their mom, the mom and dad, yeah, had like, or had um, dealings. But I still don't. I just don't think it would be like a cartel or like anybody wanting a drug debt. I would. I, I don't know. I just don't see that being it. But I, I. But then again, you never know. That's why we're here to see. You know. You think the killer was in the house? Okay, Gregory said, I think the killer was in the house on Saturday and interacted with those four. Something occurred and the person left in a rage. Person blamed other three for in influencing decision. Maybe Kaylee dumped his boyfriend. Okay. All right. Give me just one second. I will be right back. Sorry. Hold on one Sorry about that. Just grab my Okay. Let's see where we're we at. Oh, thank you, Doreen. Yeah, don't forget to hit that like button for me. I have to do like an intermission now. And if you do like the content or you like true crime, you know, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. Is it true that Ethan was arrested with cocaine previously? I haven't heard that, and I wouldn't think it would be true. He just, they, I don't know, they don't seem like those kids, but but then again, you never know. I mean, kids do a lot of crazy things. Um, let me see. So that was what I was going to ask you. Did you guys, have you guys heard that the coroner that investigated this case um, did you hear that she was a nurse? She's just a nurse practitioner. Like the lady that's been talking about the case. I need to look into her. Oh, someone called Josh. I don't know who that one, who that would be. 
all photographers take way more photos than they need in case some don't turn out film these guys. So that's part, do you think that's a good amount that they take? Because I mean, I don't know. I took a lot of pictures that I have like that many on my camera right now, I think. <laughs> so that's pretty bad. But I mean, I think that's a lot of pictures to take. Most likely uh, an ex-Marine or Army that knew how to kill most effectively, yeah. And move on through an area without leaving any trace. No one screamed out loud. Even the one who fought back never screamed. Yeah, you would think that, like, um, it would be somebody that's either done this before or knows what they're doing. Maybe either, like, military hunter or something like that. Because, um, the, you know, the, the wound to the chest kind of let, let you know, you know I mean, like, lets you know that they wanted to take them out quick. I don't know who that. So what is it? Who did you think that was creepy? Oh, the Josh guy. I have to look that up. Crime stories obsessed. I, don't, I think I have her on my. I think I have her on my YouTube. I, I don't know. Is it a girl? Or is that the one? Oh, is that the girl with the the, the glasses and the brown hair? In the gaming chair, and the she wears headphones. She's really pretty. If that's her, I can't. I don't watch her because I can't understand her accent very well, and so I can't like. It's just it's just me. It's just my ears. She's so pretty and everything. And I love I love her accent, but like, I don't know. I just can't obtain the information when she reads it to me. But she is really good. If that's who it is. They would have had to, and they would have had to have had an injury, you would think. Slippage. Unless they were wearing some sort of leather gloves. Like a glove that you could grip. I mean, I don't know. There are, they do make gloves that you don't you can't cut through. So I know that they make those. I don't know if that person would go to that extreme to have those handy, but in some places, all a corner means is a driver's license. Wow. Shoot. Sign me up for their salary. I wouldn't want to be a corner, but. Someone has reported the photos to authorities. Okay, that's good. Yeah. We do. Re yeah. And I think they're giving us some. I think they're giving us a good amount. But um, I think that they could tell us who the target was. I don't think that that's going to hurt because they said this is a targeted attack. And they don't believe that the public is in danger. They said that. They believe this is targeted. So if it's targeted, why don't you tell us who, who the target was? I don't think that would hurt the investigation. I mean, I think the person already by now, if I don't think he probably kept the murder weapon. If he did, I mean, there's been dumber criminals. But, you know, we've been talk, they've been talking about what weapon they've been wanting for, like, weeks now. So I think that that's kind of bad, so. Oh, I skipped your message of Buse. I'm, I'm like, I must have missed some. You know, I read that one, the one that yeah, she gets to drive. Yeah, I think that I, I'm going to look her up in Idaho State Police. But I just don't know if like, if she would, I don't know, if that would have anything to do with it. But, I mean, it could. You never know what could happen, you know. Do this. So we'll look at that after we're done looking at this. See if there's anything else on here, but there's probably not. They did do 3D scans of that residence, which I think is really, like, um, neat. Like, I don't know. It's, hard. it's sad to say that, like. Because, you know, it's like a crime scene. But I, they're really nice to be able to use because it literally scans the whole house or the room that they're, you're in. It goes like room by room. And the 3D scanners will scan the whole room. And it'll it'll place everything back to where it was, like in these 3D images. Um, down to like even a shoelace or a cigarette butt or, you know, the pack of cigarettes or like in the brand name on them or, you know, things like that. They're the technology with those are um, just very intriguing to me because I went to school for criminal justice. So that's probably why. 
I feel like I feel so um I don't I feel passionately about them because I think that they're a really good tool to use. So I'm glad that they brought those in. And um, over 260 digital media submissions by community members to the FBI link. Oh. And then we know like the public is it says anytime that there is a crime against a person, there's a potential danger to the general public. However, detectives believe these murders are targeted. As always, stay vigilant and look out for one another. Okay. Let's talk about staying vigilant. Both of these people were in groups. That's staying vigilant. All of these people were inside of their home in the safety of their home. That's being vigilant. And if those doors were locked and that person broke in through a lock somehow, like, and they didn't show any like way of them, like breaking the lock and, you know, no force entry, then that's still them being vigilant. Like I just, when people, I think it was the chief during the press conference. He said that he said like, um, Oh, I'll have to look at that. He said, uh, stay vigilant and like stay in groups. And I'm like, what are you talking about? TMZ? You know, they've always got some stuff fast. Um, let me see. Let me if I put it in. This was three days ago. That's six days ago. Let's see. It said it was Cindy Sparks. It said that they just now dropped it. Wow. I don't even see it on here. TM. Yeah, that's it. Okay. 541. Okay, so maybe this. Oh, wait. I'm going to just get. I didn't need to do that. Sorry. Let me know if this is the video also. So I think that's the one. Did I did I play on your guys' side? I did share that, didn't I? That's the side. Let me know if it if it didn't share on your side. I'll play it again. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they're just being college kids. Like, I mean, I hate to admit it, but there's been times that me and a girlfriend will walk downtown at Ohio, on Ohio State's campus, and it's in downtown Columbus. Like, it's right there. So, um, and, you know, you see people out that, you know, that make you a little uncomfortable, maybe. But when you're with a person, even, you don't think about anybody following you home. Or, I mean, and even if, and I, I believe if somebody was following them, I think, I do believe that one of them girls would have either turned around and, uh, <laughs> and said something, like, smart, because they did have a little bit of alcohol in them. Like, what are you doing? Or um, they would have, like, I feel like, I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't have documented it into their phone because they had each other there, though. They can't kill four and not leave evidence of some, yeah, of some kind. Police have to have something even if they don't know it yet. Yeah, they really do. They have to have something. Like, um, whether that is blood evidence um, like tissue evidence, something like that, fingerprints, but I just don't think fingerprints are going to, other than if it's in blood or on the body or on the clothing in a certain way, I don't think that those are going to be really usable or maybe if it's, if it's on the sink or something, you know, where they could have washed that maybe, but so many people go in and out of that house, fingerprints are going to be everywhere, you know? TMZ got me thinking maybe so they came in the front door and never came out or sliding door was open. I'm praying they got more than we are told. I think that the front door was open, ajar. That's why I think that he came in the front door. I've been I've been thinking that since because the chairs. I just don't see the police putting the chairs down like that. I'm gonna let me see here. Mm. Let me look up uh, if I can look her up. What would her? What was Zayna's mom's name? I don't know if I remember seeing that. So I can look her. I'll, I'll look her up on the um, database. Let's see. Let's see. Um, oh yeah, I was going to show you the thing again. Let's see. Let me put it here. See when this is from. This one's the 26. This one was from the 20th. Okay. Let me see here. I'm going to show you this again because I just don't get it. And I think we have some new people in the group. So um, as I'm sharing this, I'll just go ahead. If you guys could, if you guys are new and you haven't liked the video yet, if you could please like the video for your girl, that'd be great. I would really appreciate that so very much. I don't have mods in my chat yet to like let y'all know those things and remind you guys. So I have to remind myself. And then when we start talking about a case, sometimes I forget, you know. So yeah, make sure that you hit that like, the like button, the subscribe button. We talk all true crime here on this channel. I do lives and then I do pre-recordings and a lot of my pre-recordings are like just based on the facts. I'll do timelines. That way we are all caught up and all together for when we come live. And then we just kind of sleuth around and see what's going on with the lives. I mean, I, we don't really sleuth too much here, but we do just check around and we give each other our opinions, which I love that. Let's see. Oh, we're actually still looking at this. Let me share this again, actually, really quick before I do that. I forgot I was sharing this with you guys. Um, yeah, the, since the cops are saying it's not what video footage shows, it, what it doesn't show, hence coming in one door and not leaving from it. That could be it. Yeah, they could have a, some sort of, uh, maybe the back door has some sort of, or front door has some sort of like camera around it. Like, I mean, like someone else like that lives in that area. We can even look around to see um, what houses are close by. 
Oh, did you find out Ellie put the schools like that? There was a video early on the investigation where Ellie had to, to the door slid all the way open, probably put there to keep looters out in crime scene undisturbed. See, but you would think any crime scene ever, they just put crime scene tape up. That's all they do. They just tape up the door. And then if they're afraid that someone's going to go in there and like loot or steal, they'll post a cop there. You know what I mean? I would think they would post a cop there overnight anyway, because there's people working in day in and day out. It's just so weird to me because that definitely looks like something a person would do. Like not like a cop to me, but the second pictures of them standing up, that looks like, you know, maybe something a cop would do. Um, cause this one, like the one that I was going to show you is on, um, this one was on the 20th. So this one, this picture was on the 20th. Um, crimes happened on the 13th. So it could very much well, I mean, it could have well be the police that did that, but I mean, they didn't care about this trash over here collecting all kinds of bugs or whatever. They, but they cared about the chairs. I don't know. And then um, on the 26th, then that's when they were gone. Like the... Um, that's, remember, that's whenever they were standing straight up. I know I can... Oh, there we go. I know I can like, zoom in on my computer. It's, it's hard for me to... I've never done it before. Okay, so yeah. I don't know. It's just so weird to me. I hope I wish I could be at one of the press conferences just to ask that question. Like, you know, because I mean I understand you could I mean you have to move things anyway, want me to collect evidence around it, things like that. I just wish that I wouldn't have saw that because now it's in my it's like in my head, you know what I mean? Where I keep thinking like he the killer, whoever did this, you know, um, they came in that, that front door when in the beginning, all I thought was the sliding door. And then maybe he came, you know, down the stairs and like ran out the front door. A lot of people say, uh, Tanya, why do you say it's a him? Why do you, it can't be a her. Just the phys physicality of it. I think it's a guy. I think it's a man. That's why I, I don't know. That's why I say that. But yeah. Um, I just don't understand. And then, so then um, where is the other ones? The other picture. Which is, maybe. Oops. Oh yeah, I forgot I was in the middle man. That's why. I was gonna share something else or try to show you guys something else really quick. This. Okay, so. How many people do we have in the chat? We have 22. Okay, let me get you guys' opinion on this picture then, or this this scenario, because I don't know if it's just me thinking, overthinking things, or if this is something we should really just really be looking at. Um, but I did do a video on it, and I had a lot of people ask me, so I figured, you know, I'll, I'll address it again. I think I addressed it in my last live or my last two lives, but I'm going to address it one more time. Oh, hey, SRB. Just find your channel and listening in. Oh, great. Thank you. Strange, a scene of four horrific murders hasn't gotten police guarding that area. And why hasn't trash removed and gone through? Yeah, exactly. Like, at least go through it. Take it with you. It's just sitting there. And it was like falling out of the trash can at one point. I don't know if it was in that picture because you couldn't really see around it. But I'm sure that it was still. You think that like, they would be collecting just anything. And yeah, and you think that they would have a cop posted there. Just because it's such a high, okay, so just because it's such a high profile crime too, like, you know, people, news outlets, YouTubers, certain YouTubers, I'm sure they know who they are. I mean, every cop in the United States probably knows who certain people are and they know, okay, these people could come out in drones. Let's make sure that we, you know, secure this crime scene. You would think that, especially because the FBI is involved. I wouldn't think that if this was just this one little police department doing all this by themselves. But they have the FBI with them, so they should be aware. And if not, they both need to be accountable. Yeah, the, the only thing with that is um, it says no one, um, Meriden said no one would have left by the front door. It is too open and visible from a number of directions. 
I think that they said that door was left open, though. I think that's why we were speculating maybe that's where why he left off that door. Uh, let's see here. Um, check. Something really quick. Let me see if I can find anything on and then I wanted to I want to go over this with you guys. Okay, actually I'll go over this with you first. So this is what I needed to ask you guys. Um on where am I at? I don't even know where I'm at right now, guys. What is this? Okay, so this is the first floor, second floor. I'm sorry, the second floor and third floor we're gonna go over. I'm trying to I'm trying to get this off my screen. It keeps taking me to Amazon. It must be meant to be. Okay. So this is my question for you guys. Um, if, as you can see, like on one and two, the bedroom right here, it has the bed. This is a bed right here. Just like this is a bed over here. And this is a bed right here. So you have Ethan and Zaina. They're one and two. And then you got Kylie or Kaylee here. She's number three. Madison is number four. So she's going to be fourth person. If Ethan and Zaina are found, let's say right here, one and two, they're in the bed. So maybe they were found in their bed. That's why the numbers are up on the bed instead of, you know, down here or over here or anywhere else, like in the bedroom. They're on the bed. So then you have over here where Kaylee was, master bedroom. Why didn't they put the three and then put for Maddie, Maddie, put her four in the bed? If they were just going around putting numbers in the rooms. You know, to me, maybe the, that's where it correlates to where they were like positioned. Because I know that information hasn't been released. So this is just me speculating like you know that's just me speculating that's why i'm asking y'all to help me out with this one what do you guys think because if let's say um he you know kills ethan and zayna down here then he goes upstairs he could be going either to this room or this room and this is the balcony right here that comes off of kaylee's room and then for this is the window that comes out to Maddie's side of the balcony. And this right here is the balcony. And it goes around like here. Doesn't that's what I thought, Isabel. It does look like that. It looks like that she is going for the this side window. Like she's going for a window because we looked at another drawing and this that's like the wraparound porch, and there's windows right there. And then there's like slider door. They have like an extra slider door on the corner. They could have been sleeping. Yeah, and you're right. They could have been sleeping in the same bed. Essentially because they were both calling him. And then they said that the murders happened like right, like right around three. But that's just so fast after for them to sleep though. Do you know what I mean? To be actually fully asleep. And maybe... I mean, maybe they were sleeping together and one of them ran, maybe, I don't know, maybe they were sleeping together and Kaylee ran over towards her bedroom because that's where her dog was sleeping, which I don't know why her dog wouldn't be sleeping with her because, you know, usually her pets sleep with you, but you never know. Or maybe she was just trying to run out the slider door and couldn't get out this way because he was busy maybe with Maddie and maybe she had the chance to run through here. I don't know why she wouldn't why she wouldn't run downstairs. That's just me and me speculating. I just think it's so strange you know, that they're one and two's in the bed. And I guess they could have put them over there because it is a smaller looking room. But I just don't know. That's what Isabel looks like. They yeah, they heard something they're trying to get out. That's what I thought. Like they were like, they heard something and then maybe they heard that guy maybe even coming up the stairs and they goes, went opposite directions. I don't know how I would feel in that situation. I don't know how I would, if I was in that predicament, if I would run opposite of my friend or if I would stay with them. 
You know what I mean? You would think you want to split up. You would think just the adrenaline pumping in you that you would split up because that's just your natural fight or flight instinct. And if you're flighting, you're flighting, you know, you're like, you're out. I have a gut feeling that Kaylee and Madison both calling Jack that they were probably sitting in the same bed. Oh yeah, I just read that one. I'm sorry. And I meant to put that banner up for them too. This one I completely forgot. We got all these. I have like I was looking through like my banners and then all these crime cases. But yeah, I don't know. I still know about the number, so I'm just think I'm just keeping that in my mind. Um, I don't know what else, I don't know what else is on there. And I don't know where to go to see. I don't know Zaina's mom's name, last name. So this is who is not to believe. I don't know if believe is ruled out though. Um, who and what information can I trust? Well, I think you trust more than that. Who made the 911 call? Okay, so um, I meant to keep that on there. Sorry, guys. I heard an expert talking about the weapon, and he said someone who knows how to use the edge weapon with a death would come quickly, and there would be hardly any struggle. The house had no ring camera, huh, Uncle? No, it didn't. Unfortunately. Um, I was, what was I looking at? I was looking at, oh yeah, I was going to read this here because it says, I didn't, I, I never got a direct understanding of who made the 911 call, so maybe we'll get one here. On November 13th, the surviving roommate summoned friends to the residence because, um, oops, sorry. Um, they believed one of the second four victims had passed out and was not waking up. I don't know how, to, I don't know. Well, I don't know what to think about that. At 11.58 a.m., a 911 call requested aid for an unconscious person. The call was made from one of the surviving roommate's cell phones inside the residence. Multiple people talked with the 911 dispatch before Moscow police arrived at the location. So multiple people talked with them. That sounds like more than two. You'd say a couple. Multiples more than two. So, okay. Officers entered the residence and found two victims on the second floor and two victims on the third floor. Of course, they're looking for surveillance. Rumor control. It says the identity of the 911 caller has not been released. Well, we know it was somebody that we know is one of their friends or one of the roommates. Um, let's see. It just says that they don't think that, you know, the 99, 1999 double stabbing in Washington or the 2021 double stabbing um, in Oregon has anything to do with that. Why is no forensic? Oh, it's still being processed. So that's why the forensic information has been released. Oh, I'm just chilling now. Okay. Does anybody else though notice that on every press conference, the, like there's 20 minutes of them going through like a shout out of each other? I couldn't handle that last time. I was like, can we get to the freaking evidence here? Oh, Jack Showalter is the name of the hoodie guy. That's the other Jack. Okay. Yeah. Cause there was two Jacks and a Jake. That's just too many. Um, let me see if there's anything on Twitter. Um, let's see here. The Moscow police. I don't even know. I don't have them up here. I 
So this is from an hour ago and it just says, um, let's see what it says. ID Guardian is the new revolutionary app that can help play a pivotal role in the safe return of missing children and other loved ones. Download the free app today and join me in helping reunite missing I children and their families. Is this what we had already heard? Yeah, it is, because you can barely hear him. I thought maybe they had something else, but this said an hour ago, so it was just kidding. I wonder if this is the new one. Do you guys know in the next press conferences? SRB said, so it says they summoned friends over not called which makes me wonder if it was neighbors they had come over. Yeah, it could have been. Like, I'm, I don't know. I, want, I wonder if I can find the video of the neighbors, too. I don't think there's anything new really here. Um, Don't be messing with me, Fox, if I use your video. I don't, I don't usually care. <laughs> I'm like, don't, but just don't. Let's see what they say over here. Hurts to work even harder. Searching for meaningful experiences and new adventures for you to embark upon. They say when you reach the top, there's only one way to go. We say that way is onwards. Viking, exploring the oh, world yeah. in comfort. It's kind of been scary. Honestly. This is the, um, these are the neighbors that live around them. That morning, you know, on Sunday, and you just go to work, and you don't really think anything of it. You know, I was at work, and I, the only thing I heard. Just let me know what you guys feel about these neighbors people. I don't know. And then, you know, I didn't realize it was had more severity to it till I got home and I could hear the clicking of the cameras. Really small town feel, lots of hills, but it seems like a really close-knit community. Um, all of my professors and stuff that are from here, they have seemed like they've been here for a decade or longer and they seem to know just about everybody. So I would say it's a fairly small community, even though there's roughly 20 to 25,000 people here. And the officer that came by door to door, um, he asked if we had any sort of surveillance or if we knew about any other cameras or anything in the area. Sadly, this is an apartment building, and I'm assuming it's relatively old, so there's, there was nothing. Um, luckily, the apartment sent out an email a couple days ago saying they're adding new lights. Which there is a new light up there. Um, they're going to work on installing cameras just so that if anything like this were to happen again, there's a better chance of getting footage of who did it. Uh, it's just nerve-wracking, mostly, and stressful because she's always home alone because I work in the evening and stuff. Just surreal almost like something out of a tv show not something that i would have expected to be experiencing so close to home um it seems like everyone that has been here for a while is just devastated by it um, the last murder here was 2015 so seven years ago and so it's not something that happens frequently it's not like we're in a big city where it's an everyday occurrence um, so something like this is just sort of rare it doesn't happen often so people aren't used to it it's really odd because I don't know. I've never been this smiling place, really sort of other, like crime scene before. <laughs> I guess other than like a drug bust, like walking by a house and seeing cops with like a drug bust. That's the closest I've ever been to a crime scene. So especially one of this magnitude, where I could throw a baseball from my front door to the house, it's just odd. I mean, for my sister, she lives pretty much across the way. She lives in Alpha Gamma Delta, and for me, um, she walks to my apartment almost every day. And so the concern for me is just her walking by herself in the dark a lot now because you know in the summer you know it's daytime it's not as scary but in the dark now for me my concern is i just don't want her walk here by herself unless it's during the daytime and i'll go pick her up now because i don't like her walking by herself 
No, I went to bed early that night, and then I woke up to a bunch of normal, and then a couple hours later, we got a message, and there was a bunch of police here, and then that was the end of normalcy for the past week or so here. So the day that the police were called here, uh, about an hour or two after that, an officer came by and just went door to door along here just asking if anybody had seen or heard anything. Um, that's the only contact I've had with officers so far. And then I had left for work like around 11.45 and I never saw or heard anything. The night before I was up to like two and never heard anything at all, anything out of the ordinary. Like it was, it's just been crazy with just how quiet it's been. Yeah. Because we're used to having like some some sort of music here and music they, when they we come home from work. They always had little gatherings, so they always had music going. So you know, for us, we never assumed anything different. Yeah. Because they're so they used to. It. Yeah. So they always. Stay at the party house. Not necessarily. No. They had like small gatherings, maybe like ten people or so, and it never really got crazy. Other than like the usual college so, students stuff, but they were actually pretty respectful, to... considering. The house occasionally there were parties that were kind of loud. Most of the time, it was pretty self-contained. Um, but yeah, as I was taking, as I would take my dog in and out to go to the bathroom, I would just be walking by, I would look up and I would see people in the windows almost every night, um, probably four or five nights a week. So there were a lot of people that went into and out of that house pretty frequently. Uh, so yeah, it was kind of a party house, but again, this whole neighborhood is sort of like a party neighborhood because it's just off campus. So you sort of don't have to follow the university rules. I hope whoever did it gets found because four people is not something that you just walk away from and act all normal. And so whether or not the cops think there's a danger, I disagree. I think there is a danger because four people shows that that person's dangerous. So I hope he's cut. Well, he did say he went to break. I was going to say, because he doesn't look like a student, believe me, but then again, you never know. Oh, they were all found in their beds. I wonder where we can find that. At. Just because I want to see, like, you know, everything. I don't know if it was on here anyway. Let me think of the here. I'm just reading this really quick. The coroner stated the four were likely asleep. Some had defensive wounds and each was stabbed multiple times. There was no sign of SA. It doesn't say where they were found. Three names Kara goes by Cornado and Kara Denise and Kara Grant. Also, Kara goes by Kernaudel, like Kara Kernaudel, her, what's um, her, Zanon's mom's name. And who, but who is Kara Denise and Kara Roth from? Are those like other aliases or something? Oh, uh, and yeah, they, th those neighbors weren't really talking, they weren't that as well. That's what I thought too. I thought they were just, um, I mean, they were respectful though. Like they, you know, they, they could have been like, that was a big party house. It was so loud all the time, but they did. And they said, you know, they played music, but it wasn't too bad. So I just don't know. How'd the killer lock the rooms? They weren't locked, I don't believe, but the rooms were locked. Yeah, no, they weren't locked. I mean, we, they, we weren't told that anyway. I wonder if we could go. Let's see. I think that the CNN is a pretty good source. three days ago. Mm -hmm. Let me have this. Sorry. Let me turn that down. I'll put this one on the screen. 
And then if you guys are just coming in, if you could please like the video. If you like true crime and you want to subscribe, that'd be great. Love to have you. We are going to do our next giveaway at 5,000 subscribers, and we are almost, like, we're halfway there. Over oh, halfway there. Um, I was going to tell you how close we are. We are almost there. We need, like, 108 more. So we are doing so good. And I'm going to have to share this with you. It's just like a timeline of, or this one isn't the timeline, but this is more of the story. It's a timeline of events into the murders of four University of Idaho students. And then um, we'll see what this video has to offer because it's the newest one. And then if it's not a very good video, we can always look at the one on CNN if you guys want to look at that one. But you guys just let me know what you guys want to look at and I can pull it up. And then I will put the, um, I keep forgetting to always put the code in there, like the, Put the stream yard code in there if you guys want to come up with panel or anything. So let's see. Since the murder, it has been a week and a half since the murders. And while the search for the killer continues, we have learned a lot about this case. So here is a timeline of events leading up to this point. This all began last Sunday, November 13th, on day one when Moscow police responded to a house on King Road for a report of an unconscious person. There, they found four people dead inside. As police investigated, the University of Idaho issued a vandal alert for students to shelter in place because of a homicide investigation. It was later lifted and the school canceled Monday classes. On Monday, day two, Moscow police identified the victims as Ethan Chapin, Zana Kernodal, Kaylee Gonzalez, and Madison Mogan. Police still did not say how or when they died. Tuesday marked day three. That's when we learned police now believed an edged weapon like a knife was used in what they called an isolated and targeted attack. Students at U of I also returned back to class. On Wednesday, day four, after days of near silence, Moscow police and the University of Idaho hosted their first press conference. Police confirmed the weapon used was a knife and it had not been recovered. They also said there was no suspect and they could not say there was no threat to the community. However, police still believed it was an isolated and targeted attack. We are looking at everyone. Um, we are every tip we get, every lead we get. There's no one that we're not going to talk to. There's no one we're not going to interview. There's no one that we're not going to look into. Day five was Thursday and authorities released the autopsy report. According to the Latah County coroner, the manner of death was stabbing, making this a murder investigation. On Friday, day six, Moscow police released a map and a timeline of the victim's last known whereabouts. The Latah County coroner stated all four victims were likely asleep, some with defensive wounds. Each were stabbed multiple times. Moscow police shared they did not believe the surviving roommates, nor the man observed in the grub truck surveillance video were involved in the murders. On Saturday, day seven, Moscow police shared more details, including the fact that the 911 call came from inside the house on the cell phones of one of the surviving roommates. We also learned the victims were found on the second and third floor of the house. On days eight and nine, Moscow police released an update on the murder investigation, adding clarification on some misinformation on social media. And right now, police held another press conference today addressing more rumors and laying out additional resources the state of Idaho is providing for the investigation. Okay, I just wanted to show you guys that. And then um, it's starting to get dark out now. I'll turn the lights on me a little bit more. Um, I was going to show you this because it says um, University of Idaho murder victims were in bed, stabbed multiple times, and it says coroner. So this was a week ago. So we can watch this one really quick. Because um, maybe this will say exactly where they were. Were they found when you say that they might have been sleeping? Were they found in beds? Um, yes. It was a pretty large knife, so it's really hard to call them puncture wounds. 
and they were definitely stabbings. And um, I mean, it has to be somebody that's pretty angry in order to stab four people to death. Well, they kind of just made it seem like that other guy wasn't even cleared either, so I don't know about that. That was a very good one to show. I wonder when the next press conference is. I don't know if it's said it on here. I think we read all that. Doesn't see, I don't see it anywhere. But I think, was it, was it last Sunday they gave us an update? And then they gave us one on Wednesday, I thought. I'm gonna uh, stand up. I'm gonna get the fan off me, I'm a little cold. It's getting a little chillier out. I'm gonna shut my window a little bit. Y'all know me, I'm usually warm too. I was starting to get cold. All up in here. Okay. So, where are we at with this? I don't even know anymore. It's getting crazy. But yeah, I wish I knew when the next press conference was because I'll stream it. Um, if we can get that figured out, I wouldn't mind streaming it. We got through some facts tonight. Got through some stuff, I believe, that we, I don't know, that helped. Let's see. I just don't know when the next press conference is. Nope. And I haven't really heard any updates in any of the other cases either. Um, that we've been covering on the channel. Other than, um, I don't know if I said this, but Shane Quilla, but um, two out of the, I believe, six people um, have been, have um, arrest warrants out for them, so that's good. I'm just ready for another press conference on this case because there's just a lot of questions on this to go over on this case. I mean, why, did, why were the girls calling Jack? We may never know that. Um, unfortunately, I think, I believe he was probably asleep and just didn't answer, or maybe he saw him calling and he just was like, I don't want to deal with it tonight or something along those lines. And he just didn't answer. Um, I wish that we, they would give us just maybe who the target was. Maybe that would help some of our speculation kind of go down a little bit. I don't know. I feel like when we don't have enough information, we're just going to speculate. So that's what we kind of have to do right now. But everyone did some gave some really like good points. Now I have some questions I need to like research. And it did they did say they did 150 interviews also. So I wonder who all they interviewed. I'm I'm assuming you know the bar that the girls were at, probably all the employees that were there that day, um, owners, things like that, the food truck people, people at the school, the fraternity party that Zena and Ethan were at. Yeah, do the, do the holidays. 
Yeah. Probably next week. You're probably right. You are probably right. Well, I am going to jump off of here. If unless anybody has anything else they want to add. And I can come on tomorrow as well. And we can just kind of even do an open panel then too. And we can cover, you know, another case and stuff. Does anybody have any cases they want to um, cover? Like they want to talk about tomorrow? Like do like a, a full live one? Anything we haven't really talked about too much? I'm trying to think. Um, we talk about them all, you know? We really do. But I'm trying to think of one that we haven't talked about in a while. Jack the Ripper. We could be here. We could be here for a while with that one. I could start from the beginning. I mean, you know. Hmm. Someone mentioned my page. I don't know. That's weird. It is unsolved. I know. That would be a good one. Wonder how that's like still like not not even solved. It's almost like it didn't happen, but we all know it did happen. Well, we don't know it happened because we aren't there. I mean, I wasn't born then. Let's see. Yeah, we need. I was going to see what cases we haven't. Let me see what my con, my stuff is like. Let's see what videos I have out. <laughs> we can do an update on the club Q shootings. I'm pretty sure that they've got updates on that. Shankwell, of course. I don't think I have a whole live on her, do we? We don't. Maybe that's what we'll do one on. Because we haven't talked about her. Like, we've done, like, a little bit, but they could. maybe the cases are connected. They could be, Teddy. You never know, right? Reincarnated. But we could do a live on that. Has anybody heard? Well, it's almost that time for Jared to be going to court, too. Jared Lasik, so... We don't know who's all involved, but, or if Alan worked alone. I don't, see, I don't, it's hard to say that he worked alone if he got those girls to do all that stuff that he did. We should maybe do that one. Maybe we could do both. It's been a while since we've had a Delphi update. It, and isn't that true? Because then you, like, you feel guilty if you don't cover them all. Like, and then you want to, because then you get invested. And then you start to get invested in a case, and then it's like you can't stop. Like, you got to know every detail. And I'm one of those people, I don't, like, I like to know all, all the facts. I try to know all the facts as much as I can. So, but I am going to jump off of here. It's almost been two hours. I'm getting a little sleepy. But um, I will be back on tomorrow. And maybe I might, I might even um, maybe come back on later tonight, but you never know. If not, I might be on panel somewhere else. And if I am, I'll let y'all know. So if you guys have any other questions, just feel free to email me at titaniumdelbu at gmail.com. My Twitter is at um, titanium underscore bill. And then my Instagram and my TikTok is both at titanium bill. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, join our membership, cool perks, cool tiers. So, and I'll see you guys all in the next live. Bye guys.